Hi, welcome to Ms. Cooper's art class. Today I am showing you a follow along video for first time acrylic painting. Now I have a scrap canvas set aside with nine boxes drawn on it. You can draw them however you want. I just drew them the way they fit on mine. So to start with, you do need to fill in a couple of these boxes because they have to dry. I filled in my glazing one with a medium red, bright yellow for scraffito because I need a bright color. Then for scumbling, you can kind of do whatever colors you want, anything works. These are just colors that will help you see the techniques a little bit better. Um, now throughout the um, demo, I might tilt my canvas every once in a while because the light tends to bounce off of them in odd ways, so I want you to see the colors a little bit better. You can see them showing up on the glazing. So now I'm going to start painting in my underpainting section. Underpainting kind of shows you what values you might use as you build up a painting. You don't always outline everything in pencil first. Sometimes it helps if you kind of outline your tones with the paint itself because you can always paint over it and adjust it later. That's the nice, pain, nice thing about acrylic painting. So I'm starting really light by watering my paint down. You can add water and kind of work with it like watercolor like I'm doing here. So I'm just going to do a graded wash. It's not perfect. It doesn't really have to be for an underpainting because you do just go over it later with paint. I'm using a lot of just up and down strokes, vertical, all going the same direction to keep it nice and neat. And I'm even using my rag to kind of push the paint into the surface just a little bit more, smooth it out, and remove any excess paint. Then I take a clean dry brush and I finish smoothing it out. So our next step is to do a wash. This is a very easy box. This is just you practicing what it's like to use the paint when it's watered down a little bit, but trying to keep it even. And most of that is really in your brush strokes and making sure you double back over the same area. Acrylic paint does dry really quickly. It dries a little slower when you use a wash because you add water to it, but because it dries fast, you do have to be careful about your brush strokes and keeping it neat. Now we're practicing blending in layers, and to start this one, you just need to fill in your spot kind of lightly. I watered down the paint on the left end, but kept it a little bit thicker on the right end. And now we're going to practice blending in one layer. And keep in mind, you can always pause this video to catch up. This is meant to kind of follow along and use your materials as you go. For blending, I'm using orange and yellow simply because they're my favorite colors and they're next to each other on the color wheel. You'll notice that I start by placing them right next to each other. No blending yet. And then I clean off my brush I dry it and then I start blending them together. I use a little zipper zigzag motion and then I just start kind of going back and forth between the two colors, bouncing back and forth. They're both wet, they're both active, they're both running into each other and slowly I can start moving a little farther from end to end. I stuck in the middle but you can see I'm now going back and forth slowly end to end. I sped this up here because I, I do a lot of that back and forth. And I also add more paint because if you're blending in one layer, you need to make it thick enough that you can't really see through to the canvas underneath. So I'm adding a little more yellow paint and then blending back in with my clean, dry brush. I clean it and dry it off a lot. So that finishes off my blending in one layer. Something kind of similar are our tints and shades. When you're painting, you make a tint by adding white. I'm going to start with white. It's easier to work from light to dark. It's a lot harder to lighten up your paints in acrylic layers since you can see through the layers just a little bit. So I'm going to start with that light color and make sure it looks really, really good. It's even a little bit whiter than the canvas, so I know exactly how thick it is and how well I've applied it. Off to the side, just to help myself out, instead of blending straight from red to white, I mix a pink color to go in the middle. Usually when you're blending things, anything from skin tones, shadows, anything smooth, it helps if you kind of have an intermediate color. So I have a pink. For this, it didn't really matter. I just kind of mixed it right in the middle. You'll notice I'm starting kind of in the middle with blending, and slowly I'm able to go a little farther out, going back and forth between the pink and the white. 
making sure it's still nice and white on the end so you can see all of my values that I blended. After that, it's now safe to go ahead, clean and dry my brush, and then apply just straight up red to the end. The pink is still wet enough that I can blend between pink and red. The red is a little strong, so I might have to clean off my brush every once in a while as I blend, but that is totally fine. I go through a lot of rags when I paint because you need to clean your brush so much. Sometimes it helps if you have a second brush on hand that just exists to be your clean blending brush. So now with my cleaned off brush, I'm smoothing everything back out again, and I'm working from light to dark for the most part. Every once in a while I move back up, and as I go and as I feel confident with how it looks, I can keep kind of bouncing back and forth more and more. And I kept it nice and slow so you can see what that motion looks like. Notice I'm keeping my brush strokes even. My brush direction is the same the whole time. I'm not smearing the colors into each other dramatically. I'm just kind of patting them and just petting the paint into the surface. Really taking my time. Every time that brush disappears, that's me kind of cleaning it and drying it off again. So our next step is very similar to the tints. It is the shade section. So shade means you are adding black to your color instead and you're darkening it up. So I'm starting with my red. You can see the red's a little bit thin. It's easy to show the canvas through it, so I'm thickening it up and neatening it as I go. Kind of similar to the white to red. Instead of mixing a pink in the middle, I'm mixing a different middle color, just some red and black together, and applying that to make my blending easier. Now I have this one sped up because you did see something very similar going from red to white, but you can always pause here while you um, get everything together and get your painting ready to go. So I've applied my colors. Looks pretty good, but not very blended yet. So now my brush is clean and dry again so I can start blending. Now the red and black paints are a little less thick than the white paint, so it's getting a little bit thin in the middle. I can kind of see my canvas through. They're blending nicely, sure, but I can still see my canvas, so I will probably go back to that later. So now we are back in the glazing and sgraffito area. Glazing is already nice and dry, so is sgraffito. Glazing is when you water down a color and then apply it over the top, so I'm going to apply a little stripe of white. So you can see what happens when I water down the white, like watercolor, and apply it over. It doesn't exactly turn pink, it just kind of looks like a white glow. I'm also putting blue next to it. It's very thin blue, just to show you what it looks like when you do a slightly thinner glaze. So now Scraffito. This one's really great for details or just for general texture. Take a dark color or a, a different color, at least. It could be lighter, I suppose, and apply it nice and thick over your original color. Don't let it show through too much. I let it show just a little bit at the bottom. And then take something not necessarily sharp, but defined like the end of your brush handle and start scratching out that wet paint that's sitting on the top to show the color below. This is really cool for hair, for highlights, or for texture in an abstract painting. So now let's look back at the underpainting section. We painted in that burnt sienna color, a nice brown, and now we know where to put our tones in the painting over it. This is good if you are doing something with a lot of details, especially something like a portrait, or perhaps if you are outside painting, you're doing a landscape, and you need to quickly get the underpainting and then work from a photo later. There's a lot of reasons to use an underpainting. So now, as I apply the orange, I can remember how I wanted that tone to look, and it kind of tones down my painting a little bit. I could make it more intense by adding more orange, or letting it dry and add more layers and keep building and building on it. But if you want to give your painting an entire tone like brown or blue or even purple, that helps if you have that underpainting kind of floating under all the colors, being slightly able to see it as you blend everything out. And it gives your painting a different feeling. Think about what it would look like if you had a blue undertone versus a red or a brown or a black. So I'm choosing Burnt Sienna, which is a very common underpainting color, and you can see how that guided my layers and made them look nice and smooth. So now let's look at blending in 
layers. So this is different from underpainting in that I don't really have anything to support it. I'm watering down my orange paint and I'm thinking of it more like watercolor right now. So I have a dry layer of yellow so now I'm adding a wet layer of orange on top of it so the colors aren't blending together so much as sitting on top of each other instead. And so now I'm adding a little orange with less water. Acrylic does dry really quickly so often you will have to blend in layers just a little bit. It can also help you just correct blending that you already had but maybe wasn't perfect. Maybe you just need a little bit of watered down color to add on. I might add more to that later so I won't mark it done yet. The next one is called Scumbling. This one is very fun. It's a great way of blending um, that has a little bit of natural texture and looks very painterly. It's very fun. So what you do is you apply your paint on top of dry paint or mostly dry. This is a mix of dry and mostly dry. And you kind of do little circular motions and you blend it in. So it looks painted. It looks like it's done by hand. And this is a very interesting texture. Very useful for things like trees and clouds too. I just switched very quickly to a brush with shorter bristles too because sometimes that gives you more control over your scumbling if you like the painterly look but maybe you want a little bit more control. So here I am doing it again on the other side. I picked up a little bit of wet paint but the top is a little bit drier. The brush disappeared so I could wipe off the extra paint and now I'm going back in. I don't usually scumble with a wet brush. I like to use a dry brush. I can always wipe paint off but I don't really clean it off with water. I feel like that adds to my scumbling look a little bit, but this is definitely something to play with and figure out how you like to do it and use whatever colors you want for this section, whatever helps you discover scumbling a little bit easier. So let's look back at the rest of it. This is just me correcting. The tints looked good. The shading looked a little bit thin in the middle, so I'm adding another layer of paint and making it look a little bit nicer. I can kind of see that canvas texture and I want to I want to practice covering it really well and working with layers. Good practice is the best kind of practice. I mixed a lot of the colors that way they wouldn't dry out in between. I can always use a spray bottle or a wet paper towel to keep my paints wet under the cling wrap but it helps if you just kind of mix a lot of it so it doesn't dry out easily when you're doing things like this. So now I'm done with that one. From blending in layers, all I really needed was a bit more intense orange to kind of make it match the other blending underneath because that was my goal was to kind of match those. So once I do that, I'm pretty much good to go. I cleaned off my brush so I can blend it a little bit easier, but then I left it at that and I was done. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, for joining my classroom today. Hopefully you had fun acrylic painting and remember to explore the texture. There's a lot of fun to explore. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like if this was helpful or subscribe if you'd like more. Thank you.